there we go. That's actually really clever. It's so simple, but really, really clever. I love it. Hey, how's it going? I'm Roy from Rent My Funeral. That was great, by the way. So welcome along to another tech review video. This is cool. I've been sent a really, really cool looking toy. So this is like a desk mounted laser engraver. It's called the Auteur uh, Laser Master 2 Pro. It goes on your desk and it can cut out uh, bits of wood or it can engrave onto wood and do all sorts of various weird and wonderful things. And the beautiful people over at Auteur sent me this to have a play with. They also sent me some apparel, 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 whatever. Now this is interesting because when I opened this, I looked at this and thought, what are they saying about me? This is a triple XL, all right? Now, I'm not slim as such, but I'm not really triple XL, but to be fair, this actually fits me rather well. Now, I do not understand this. I'm just gonna go with it, but I might change in a second because I'm already getting quite warm. <laughs> anyway, enough of the nonsense. What we need to do is get this open and have a look at it and find out what it's all about. But before we begin, a quick note. These are around about $400 and available on the website. I will link in the description below so that you can go and have a look and maybe pick one up if you so wish. But now let's get on and get this thing opened up. Okay, so I have here two boxes and I believe this one, according to this piece of information here, is a Y-axis rotary roller. I think this is for uh, engraving cylindrical shapes, which is amazing actually. I, I didn't even ever think of that, so I'm quite excited to have a play with that. It looks really cool to be honest. It's like it's a new version of an existing one, which has got had a load of tweaks and things done to it to make it supposedly better, uh, which I'm about to find out. And inside is the super exciting. Oh wait, I take that off. Ah, there it is. Hey, hey look at all that. So it's gonna look something like this when it's uh, built. So simple, simple, nice, I like that. Let's take all the pieces out. So this is the actual like, laser head bit. Obviously it's in the uh, anti-static bag, but the um, it's got a shield on it. So you don't need to wear gloves. You don't need to wear glasses. <laughs> gloves. <laughs> don't wear gloves when you're laser engraving your hands. Right, power supply, not UK though. Oh, come on. Kind of everything, I suppose. But it does still come with glasses in case you do need to put some on. Um, we've got some uh, stuff. <laughs> got a USB lead. Oh, wow. One side. Brackety brackets. A lot of screws. A cool looking front bit. More bars, and then this cool tractor looking thing for keeping the cables nice. So, my experience with laser engraving and so on is quite limited. I reviewed the Snapmaker Pro, which had uh, CNC 3D printing and laser engraving, and I had a quick try with it. and I made a little cutout box out of some balsa wood, which was really cool, really easy to do, very, very interesting. But that is the only time I've ever played with this kind of thing. So, basically, I am coming at this pretty much like a complete beginner. Um, and now I need to obviously put all this together. Hmm. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I have all the main bits all now out and ready. It doesn't actually seem that daunting. There's a few bags with like lots of screws in, but I don't think it's a real problem. It says on the website it will take around about 15 to 20 minutes to assemble. The pieces seem like they're of pretty decent quality. You can see there it's got some uh, measurements on it which is quite nice. Uh, it all kind of feels pretty solid. This is a kind of, it's got this really cool emergency stop button which I love um, and I love the fact that the cabling goes into this kind of tank tread. I'm not sure what the real term for that is. Drop it in the comments. What's the real term for this? Because I can't remember. This is good because the last printer I reviewed, uh, the cables were just flapping around at the back and it didn't, uh, yeah, it was a, a bit of a concern. Whereas this one, no, this is this is really good so far. But just quickly to mention, it does come with the manual in the box, uh, which is like uh, printed out. 
it, the size is not too bad, it's quite readable, well at least the English bits are for me, I can't read the German stuff and the, uh, the other languages, but the English stuff's good, and um, it's fine. So I've got this, but I've also got it on the PC, I downloaded it from the website so I have the best of both worlds. Let me see if I can get this all put together. For the start, I need the four pieces of um, profile, four corner brackets, and then I need uh, four of the longer screws and four nuts. Step two, it says, is the most important element of this assembly. Ah! Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's really crucial that this is kind of all done, like assembled in a very specific way. So based on the images I am looking at, it needs to be specifically 0 to 40, 0 to 40, 0 to 40. Now what it seems to be is that I need my aluminium profiles all going in a very specific direction. So I'm going zero to 40 centimeters from there and here and zero to 40 centimeters forwards. And then I need to obviously put it all together. So my corner bracket, heads up, ignore that last bit. These are the wrong corner brackets. These are the correct corner brackets. <laughs> so these then go in like so and in like so. And I put in two profile nuts on the back side. Two going to this side as well. Don't worry about why I have this mat here, by the way. Basically, there's a big mark on the desk. I just put it there to cover it up. It looks a bit nicer. Okay, so I now have my corner brackets in place. Now I slide in there until that's on the corner and just do it finger tight for the minute. I'm making sure that this is inside of these bars. So the long pieces are on the outside, the shorter pieces are on the inside. Make sense? This now leaves me with a big square. Well, I suppose very plain. Square enough. Basically, now that this is all together, I've got my two cage nuts in either side. I need to make sure that I have the front left to here, which is zero and zero. That's how I know this. Next, I'm going to attach the main board. So this guy here. I'm going to attach him to the profile and one of my cage nuts. Okay, it's a little tricky to line it up, but once you've got it lined up, you just screw it up. And then we'll take one foot and we'll do the same on the other side. So one goes into the profile and one goes into the uh, thing. The cage nut, the cage nut. So you should end up with that, basically. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna take this little bracket. Uh, there's a washer and a screw that I've already put on this and a cage nut. This goes on the underside. Here, I believe facing outwards to the side of the motherboard. Next, the 3D printed part. I've put two screws and two cage nuts on there. I'm just gonna slide this into the front here, like so. I'll put it over there and just do it up for now. I'm not sure exactly where it's supposed to go, but we'll just do it up relatively tight. But remember, this is a 3D printed part, so don't do this up too tight. You might end up breaking it, and you don't wanna smash up your 3D printed part. No, that'll be a right pain. So next I have this teeny tiny little bracket thing and I also have two teeny tiny little screws. These are going to go into here, <laughs> like that. And then I'm going to attach these onto this. So yeah, on here, basically I'm looking to put that kind of there. I don't know if you can see this, probably can't. But you're looking to wind up with something like that. So next I'm going to flip this up the other way around again. And I'm going to put in two cage nuts into this one that are heading towards our motherboard on this side. Now I'll flip it back over again. And I believe I come in from this side with all the screws pointing away. There we go. And I know it's good because that moves quite easily. Sorry if this is banging the desk. <laughs> but that moves quite easily, so that's good. Now we're on to timing belts. Oh, there's some, there's some test bar sample bits in there, actually I hadn't noticed them. Good. Okay, so I've got my two timing belts. Carefully guide the timing belt with tooth facing down over the sprocket under the left side wheel, sliding it inside the V-rail slot until it reaches past the rail about six centimeters. <laughs> I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but I believe... Okay, so I've gone under the wheel, now I go over the sprocket, and now I need to get back under the wheel and out the other side. Yeah, I'm through, I'm through. 
No, all right, it wasn't too bad. I can now pull my timing belt. Right, that's that one done. So now I think I, I believe I have the same thing to do on this side. Right, so I have timing belts put through both sides. I'm pretty sure that's what you're supposed to do. So next, I'm going to undo this screw here. And now that reveals there's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see that, you probably can't, but there's a little tiny hole. And I have to poke this through it. So that that now comes out through that hole. And it says that it needs to be about two and a half centimeters. So it doesn't have to be completely accurate, just enough so that you can hold it basically. Because now we put the screw back in and we pull this upwards. So basically this, the screw is now holding that in place. That's not going anywhere. Nice, clever, clever stuff. There we go. That's actually really clever. It's so simple, but really, really clever. I love it. Yeah, so I made a little bit of a mistake earlier. I, I said about sliding these nuts into the, well, I said about sliding, ah, there goes one. <laughs> I said about sliding these nuts into the underside. I meant to put them in the top side, not the underside. I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna see, I'm hoping I can do this without having to take all of this assembly off again. But that, that was absolutely my fault. Okay, that's, that. that's now fixed. Okay, so this piece here with the little switch on it, the timing belt actually goes through the little D-shaped part of it, and then you line that up with those two cage nuts that I just had to reposition. Tighten one side up. Not too tight though, because we still want to move it a little. And then you just fold that over and you tighten and put the other side in. In exactly the same way as the other side. In exactly the same way as the other side. Tighten that up, and that should then hold that in place. Move this right to the back. Super duper. Nice and tight, there we go. Right, so that's that done. So I've got another two feet, four screws and two washers. I'm gonna come around the other side and attach these over here. Again, just like the other one, this comes through here and then using this screw and its washer, you pull that in and that holds that in place. Nice. Then we'll repeat the same on this side. Right, well, we now have it to this stage where we've got tension belts in, we've got all the bits there all done. We cannot be far from getting this ready to actually do something with. Ooh. Right, so I've got to screw this bad boy into here. Right, so now it's onto the wiring. Now this one looks pretty straightforward because I would assume that we just need to poke this into the motherboard here making sure not to bend any pins. Then you've got this, which is for the limit switch. Now this is gonna be a normally open going closed. So it means that we just need to go across the, uh, the, the switch. So one on the one side of the switch and then one in the center, like so. And then up here, what have we got? So this one will go into here and I have the same thing here. I'm gonna put the red by the switch and then I'm going to put the black in the middle. This one goes into the Stepper motor. Uh, there is a grounding wire on this one, which I will just pop into here. But it's all there. I'm just putting in this earth in there. Right, so I have now plugged in all of the cables and everything on here, and it's now time to put this print head. I'm calling it a print head, it's not a print head. <laughs> but we've got to put this on. And this is objectively the scariest piece. Because this is a laser! And it's really cool looking. Oh, look at the top of that. It looks really good, doesn't it? So yeah, the laser. This is uh, really smart looking. It makes me feel more, sort of more clever than I am messing with this. I don't know why, but yeah, yeah. This is really cool. So basically, in this little bag, there are some... There's like a cool bit of metal. And these two bolts. And I believe these are going to go through here. And then this is going to go down onto this. Is that right? So yeah, so I tightened the thumb screw up. That's now held in place. Okay, so now I loosen the front left one of these screws. Okay, 
and then pop this cable into here and this under there, kind of as neatly as possible, and then tighten that back up again. Now just with a couple of cable ties, I'll wrap that around there so it holds it in place. This metal tube goes in there. Don't know what that's for, all about yet, but I'm sure we'll find out at some point. Okay, well there we go. It is now all assembled and put together. And overall, that was actually not a bad assembly. I think there was one bit where I got a little bit confused. I made a slight mistake, but it was quite easy to rectify. But overall, there's a lot of detail in those instructions that as you're reading them, you think, Jesus, there's so much to do. But then you, th ah, no, it's just detail. So it just gives you more detail than you really need. And it makes you actually go through the steps much quicker than you might think you would. So overall, a very pleasant assembly experience. I enjoyed that. And this is definitely one of those bits of kit that make me feel more intelligent just by having it near me. <laughs> so in the next video, we will get this powered up. We will do some testing with it, install all the software, see what we've got to do and find out what funky, cool projects we can do with this thing. So if you did enjoy this video though, please do hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button, followed by the little bell. And then that way you'll see when the video comes out where we actually start playing around with this and seeing what it's like to actually use. So brilliant. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.